is Ashley 645. This is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. News edited by Danushka Madhavel and read by Sharifa Tahir. Headlines. An allowance to government officials with the purpose of meeting development goals. Divisional secretaries empowered to direct school leavers to inform technology, information technology and vocational training. NSBM Green University to get new medical faculty. Project will be implemented to empower 16,000 Aswasma families. Over 2,000 to be recruited to Graman Illadari service. India and Sri Lanka discuss renewable energy cooperation and technology transfer. Foreign news, Haiti's Prime Minister Ariel Henry resigns as law and order collapses. In sports, Saudi Pro League side Al-Hilal break world record with 28 successive win local news in detail prime minister dinesh gunawardena says that an allowance to government officials with the purpose of meeting development goals he said that the government was able to increase the income in such a way that we could increase some allowances for government employees The Prime Minister mentioned this yesterday at the occasion of opening the new building of Mundalam Divisional Secretariat in Puttalam. The Premier added that they have discussed with the President yesterday and took a decision to increase number of allowances for deputy officers in each Divisional Secretariat and District Secretariat. It was decided to meet development goals. Accordingly, new allowances may be added to officials to meet the development goals. It is necessary to create effective products and services by working towards the goals of the district secretaries and divisional secretaries. Prime Minister Dinesh Gunawardena also says divisional secretaries empowered to direct school leavers for information technology and vocational training. The premier also said that a special power was granted to equip school leavers with IT and professional skills. It can be government departments or local authorities everyone can involve in this program. Get the necessary financial facilities and professionals with necessary knowledge to meet the goals of imparting special knowledge to the children. He said that he thinks that in the next two months The divisional secretaries will support another path of education that leads to the possibility of entering a new society, a society with new knowledge. Mass Media Minister Dr. Bandra Gunawardena said the government has decided to upgrade the Homa Gama Base Hospital as a teaching hospital for the establishment of a med- faculty of medicine under the National School of Business Management cabinet spokesman said. Speaking at the weekly cabinet media briefing held yesterday at the Government Information Department, Minister Gunawardena said that the Cabinet of Ministers approved the proposal presented by President Ranil Vikramasinghe to take over the Homa Gama Base Hospital under the purview of the Health Ministry and upgrade it as a teaching hospital. He further said that the NSBM Green University is a state-owned institution which started when Dallas Ala Perma was the vocational training minister. It has been proposed to establish a medical college under the direct supervision and regulation of the Education and Health Ministries and the Sri Lanka Medical Council by the National School of Business Management, a fully self-financed institution owned by the government, and to award MBBS degrees through it. It is expected to enroll 500 local and foreign students annually for the relevant degree course. The institution has sought approval to reserve the Homagama Base Hospital as a suitable government hospital for clinical training of the degree of this medicine faculty. The institution has sought approval to reserve the Homagama Base Hospital as a suitable government hospital. Cabinet spokesman Mass Media Minister Dr. Bandula Gunawardena said the government has taken measures to implement a pilot program to empower families receiving benefits under Aswasma. He was speaking at the weekly cabinet media briefing held yesterday at the Government Information Department. The cabinet ministers has granted its consent to the proposal by 
President Ranil Vikram Singh as the Child and Women Affairs and Social Empowerment Minister to launch a pilot program using the Asian Development Bank and World Bank financing and local funds targeting 16,000 beneficiary families in selected divisional secretariats covering all 25 districts as the initial phase of the program. Approval was given in the cabinet meeting held on 17 April 2023 to prepare and implement a scheme for the payment of welfare benefits in accordance with the provisions of the Welfare Benefits Act number no. 24. of 2002 accordingly it has been planned to implement a program with the aim of empowering the families benefiting under the aswasama social welfare scheme economically socially and mentally for 3 years this is the sri lanka broadcasting corporation giving you the news at people's bank we empower your pride people's bank pride of the nation Continuing with more stories here at home a total of 2002 individuals were recruited to the grade 3 of Gramani Nadari service based on the results of the interviews to be held at the Home Affairs State Ministry in Narahampeta from today till the 15th of March 4232 candidates who passed the competitive examination for the recruitment of Gramani Nadari officers had qualified for the interviews to be held from today the letters calling for interviews have already been sent to candidates and any of the qualified candidates have not received the letter till now The date and time of the interview has been published on the official ministry website www.moha.gov.lk Public Administration Home Affairs Provincial Councils and Local Government Ministry Secretary Pradeep Yasaratne said In addition to this he said that information can be obtained through the website about the documents to be brought for the interview Minister of Power and Energy Kanchana Vijay Sekhara has held discussions with an Indian government delegation regarding the renewable energy cooperation between the two countries capacity building programs technology transfer investments opportunities and policies related to the sector the delegation is led by Shri Bhupinder Singh secretary to the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy of India who is on a 3 day visit to discuss possible investments and engage with renewable energy stakeholders and officials of Sri Lanka talking taking to ex minister vijay sekar said the meeting was held last morning at the ministry of power and energy that's local news for the moment right decisions with noble intentions bring pride to you and the nation at people's bank we empower your pride people's bank pride of the nation The main news story is brought to you by Siddhale Pavedha Mahatma. A newly appointed ambassador and a high commissioner to Sri Lanka presented their credentials to President Ranil Wickremesinghe at the president's house yesterday. Accordingly, His Excellency Mr. Paithun Mahapannapon The ambassador of the Kingdom of Thailand to Sri Lanka and His Excellency Major General Fahimul Aziz The High Commissioner of Pakistan to Sri Lanka presented their credentials to President Ranil Wickremesinghe, Minister of Foreign Affairs, President's Council Ali Sabri and Secretary to the Minister President Saman Nekanayake were also present at this event. The main news story was brought to you by Siddhale Pavedamahatma. And on what slide the National Water Supply and Drainage Board have requested the public to use water sparingly in light of the prevailing arid weather conditions. Deputy General Manager of the Board Anoja Kaluharachi explained that in the event of the current extreme dry weather continues for the next two months it is likely that water will have to be supplied on a shift basis. However, she assured that sufficient water levels are currently available. The request is made as a precautionary measure, stating no restriction or limitation of water supply has been implemented in areas thus far. She urged for consumers to call the 24-hour NWSDB hotline 1919 in the event of, if such issues are experienced. That's on Watchlight. coming up world news
Haiti's Prime Ministerial Henry resigns as law and order collapses. Gaza medics tell us that Israeli troops beat and humiliated them after hospital raid. Fukuyama residents warned not to touch cat after chemical tank falls. World News in Detail Haiti's Prime Minister Ariel Henry has agreed to resign following weeks of mounting pressure and increasing violence in the impoverished country. It comes after regional leaders met in Jamaica on Monday to discuss a political transition in the country. Mr. Henry is currently stranded in Puerto Rico after being prevented by armed gangs from returning home. He said his government would resign following the installation of a transition council. He has not been allowed back into Haiti after leaving in late January for visits to Guyana and Kenya where he signed a deal on the deployment of an international security force to help tackle violence. Mr. Henry had led the country on a supposed interim basis since July 2021 following former President Jovenel Moïse's assassination but had repeatedly postponed elections saying security had to be restored first. Palestinian medical staff in Gaza have told the BBC they were blindfolded, detained, forced to strip and repeatedly beaten by Israeli troops after a raid at their hospital last month. Ahmed Abu Zaba, a doctor at Nasser Hospital, described being held for a week in detention where he said muzzle dogs were set upon him and his hand was broken by an Israeli soldier. His account closely matches those of two other medics who wanted to remain anonymous for fear of reprisals. They told they were humiliated, beaten, doused with cold water and forced to kneel in uncomfortable positions for hours. They said they were detained for days before being released. Residents of a city in western Japan have been warned to stay away from a cat after it fell into a tank of poisonous chemicals. The warning comes after a factory worker found yellow paw prints leading away from the container. Security footage said it was then reviewed and the cat could be seen running away, leaving a trail of paw prints. Officials in Fukuyama have asked the public to stay away from the animal and report any sightings to the police. It is thought the curious feline had been in a vat of hexavalent chromium, a highly acidic and carcinogenic chemical which is orange and brown in color. A member of staff found the paw marks when they arrived for work yesterday at the Nomura planting Fukuyama factory, according to news website Asahi. Fukuyama City's environmental team warned the public not to touch a cat that seems abnormal, but also said the animal might have died as a result of the incident. That's on World News. Development News State Minister of Agriculture Mohan Priyadarshan Adi Silva recently highlighted the significant efforts being made by the Ministry of Agriculture to bolster their nation's economy. One of the initiatives includes plans to allocate financial support up to a maximum of 200,000 rupees for home gardening areas exceeding 10 perches. This move is aimed at empowering local agricultural activities and enhancing their contribution to economic stability. During a press briefing themed Collective Pass to a Stable Country held at the President's Media Centre yesterday, State Minister Pradarshana emphasised the government's commitment to addressing the ongoing economic challenges faced by the country. Moving on with sports news. In soccer, Saudi Pro League side Al Hilal have broken the world record for the most consecutive wins by a top flight team. Tuesday's 2 0 win over Al Ittihad in the Asian Champions League was the 28th victory in a row for Al Hilal, Saudi Arabia's most decorated team. It surpasses the 27 straight wins by Welsh side, the New Saints, in 2016. Al Hilal, whose players include former Fulham forward Alexandra Mitrovic, have won every game since the one-all draw with the Mac on 21st September. In the meantime, Barcelona reached the Champions League quarterfinals for the first time in four years with an entertaining victory over Napoli. Fermin Lopez and Juan Cancelo put Barcelona on their way to Estadi G. Montjuic, but the hosts were made to work hard by the Italian side who pulled one back through Amir 
Rahmani. A back and forth encounter was eventually settled by Poland striker Robert Lewandowski's close range finish with seven minutes of normal t- time remaining. In the meantime, Arsenal reached the Champions League quarterfinals for the first time since 2010 after being beating Porto in a penalty shootout following a night of tension at Emirates Stadium. The Gunners went into this last 16-second leg 1-0 down but drew level when Leonardo or rather, rather Leandro Trussard put them ahead on the night four minutes before the interval with a smooth finish following brilliant work by Captain Martin Odegaard. A scrappy, fractious encounter failed to yield a winner even after extra time and it was Arsenal who held their nerve to go through the last eight. That's on Sports News. Go ekakiana youth ticket, life again, change ticket, near meta set trainer. As for Hagena, the Kapuina, Habakarana, youth ticket, near meta set trainer, friendship recommender. The all new NSP Ithrumitru account, NSP I am a plan for your dream. Business News, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Chinese technology giant Xiaomi says it will start deliveries of its first electric vehicle this month, its first ever foray into the competitive automotive industry. The car's price is expected to be announced on the 28th of March. China's fifth largest smartphone maker says it has 59 stores in 29 cities around the country to take orders. It comes as a price war intensifies between firms like BYD and Tesla in China, the world's biggest car market. At the unveiling of the Speed Ultra 7 last year, Xiaomi's chief executive, Li Jun, said the company aims to become one of the top five car makers in the world. The smartphone giant has said it will invest $10 billion US dollars in its vehicle's business over the next 10 years. Business News Sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Go ekatiana youth ticket, life again, change ticket, near meta set trainer. As for Hagena, the Kapuina, Habakarana. Youth ticket, near meta set trainer, friendship recommender. The all new NSB Ithrumitru account, NSB I am, a plan for your dream. Bananas are set to get more expensive as climate change hits a much-loved fruit, one of the world's top experts from the industry tells. Pascal Liu, senior economist at the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, says climate impacts pose an enormous threat to supply compounding the impacts of fast-spreading diseases. The World Banana Forum meets in Rome on Tuesday to discuss the challenges. Some UK shops recently experienced shortages due to sea storms. That's an economic news. Weather report. Showers or thunder showers may occur at a few places in Western and Sabaragamo provinces and in Gaul and Matra districts in the evening or night. Mainly dry weather will prevail elsewhere in the island. Misty conditions can be expected at some places in Western and Sabaragamo provinces and in Gaul and Matra districts during the morning. That's the weather update. And before we wind up this bulletin of news, back to the headlines. An allowance for government officials with the purpose of meeting development goals. Divisional secretaries empowered to direct school leavers to information technology and vocational training. NSBM Green University to get new medical faculty. Project will be implemented to empower 16,000 Aswasma families, over 2,000 to be recruited to Grama Nidadari service. Foreign news, Haiti's Prime Ministerial Henry resigns as the law and order collapses. In sports, Saudi Pro League side Al-Hilal break world record with 28th successive win. With that, we conclude the morning bulletin of news and it's back to Anupama this morning.